Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of ICM, the Python version. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to bring clicks into the equation of what we are doing. So how to make things happen based on the mouse clicking. Um, now, we are using the same code that we were using previously. So I would strongly recommend that you duplicate the code you were using from the collision activity. You'll notice that mine still just has two shapes working. Yours hopefully has all six or all five, I'm sorry. Um, if yours doesn't, or if you haven't watched that video, I would recommend going back to this because essentially we're gonna turn these shapes into buttons. Once you are ready and you have your screen set up, we're gonna get into it. Please remember you can pause and rewind whenever you would like. So starting out, there's something we need to know about making the mouse click. There are two ways to do it. The first is a variable called mouse pressed that is a system variable like mouse X and mouse Y. It's always hanging around, checking to see if the mouse has been pressed or not. Um, and we can add that into our conditionals. So let's just see how it looks first. This is not required. You're welcome to just watch. But I'm just adding a statement to my program that is going to print the result of the variable mouse pressed. And because it's in draw, it's going to be doing this all the time. So you'll see that right away when I hit run, it's saying false continuously because I'm not clicking my mouse. My hands are here. I'm not clicking anything. The second I click, it starts becoming true. So this variable holds a Boolean option of true or false, which means that we can utilize the mouse pressed variable in any of our pre-existing um, conditional statements, which we wrote two together in the last video, and then you wrote three on your own. So if I look at, for example, this circle, right now it changes just when I hover on it. But if I go to my circle conditional, and after this whole function that is deciding if my mouse is on the circle or not, I add an and mouse pressed. Now, when I run my code, it doesn't change when I'm on top of it, but it will change if I'm on top of it and clicking. So this has now turned my shape into a button. Now, there's not like a right or wrong reason why you might have something change on hover or change on click. It's all about how you want your program to work. So maybe I was happy just having it as a hover reaction. That's great. But maybe I want my program to be a little bit more sensitive. I don't want things to happen until the user makes like a very purposeful decision like clicking. And that's where this comes in handy. And I can go ahead and add this to my line as well. I'm gonna hit stop, I'm gonna hit play. And now when I click on my line, it gets thicker. When I'm done clicking, it gets thinner. So that's easy enough. And our first way of adding that interactivity, um, I'm gonna actually, I want that one to be there. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the line one for just a minute, just to not confuse things. Um, this is beautiful and this will work for like 75% of everything that you wanna do. Now the other 25%, I'm gonna demonstrate and I'm gonna ask you to come on an imagination journey with me. Let's imagine that I am trying to make a game. It's not a very good game. It's in fact, a fairly boring game, but my game has a score. So right up in setup, I'm gonna make a score variable. And like most games, my score is gonna start at zero and it's only going to improve as I play the game. I'm gonna make sure that this variable is global in my setup and my draw so that it gets a starting value and I can update it and draw. Um, and now that I have that score value, I'm gonna just like take a peek at using it. And I think the way I would like to use it is when I am on the circle and I'm clicking my mouse, I want my score to increase by one. So I'm gonna write score plus equals score. And just as a reminder, this is the exact same as saying score equals score plus one, or sorry, score plus equals one. This is the exact same as saying score equals score plus one. You're welcome to do the long version. I'm always gonna shorten it because I'm lazy. Um, so now before I run this, we just have this expectation that when I click the mouse, my score will go from zero to one to two as many times as I'm clicking. So let's change my print statement instead of on circle and instead of printing a string, let's have it print score so that I have like a visual of what's happening in my console. Um, I'm gonna click, that was one click everybody, just one. I know you can't hear or see it, but that was one and you'll see my score is already seven. If I do it again, oops, my score kept going up. It thought I was still clicking. Oh no, my computer's having a moment. I'm clicking too fast, but as I click, you'll see that it's not going up by one, even when I do the fastest clicks and I don't get it frozen, it's going up by like many at a time. And that is because we've talked about several times, the draw function runs in a loop forever. And when you press the mouse, you think it is very quick, 
the computer is able to run several iterations of the draw loop before you get to picking your finger up. And so it is increasing every single time. Now, again, there might be a world where you want this to happen, but this might be really frustrating if it's very important to you that your score counts up by one. So to that end, I'm gonna show you another option for using the mouse. So just like we have setup and we have draw, there are other major callback functions that exist in the processing library, and we can view those in the reference page. But one is called mouse pressed. I know this is confusing because it is the exact same name as the variable, but notice that this comes with the DEF, it comes with the parentheses that tell us we're dealing with a function, and then we have our colon after, as we always do with function statements. Now, a few things I want to point out about this, because it is its own major callback function, and it is not inside of draw or setup, that is very important, it is not indented at all. It's smack against the edge, and it is not interrupting anything in draw. So I could even make a note that my draw function ends here, just so that I have it. Um, it is starting after my draw. It is outside of my draw because it's pressed up to the edge. Same with setup. It's not in my setup. It's pressed up to the edge. It's lined up with that. And just like with setup and draw, there is only one mouse pressed per processing program. So we are only going to write one. That is the only thing that we'll ever execute. If we want to add more code to it, we can the same way that we add more and more code to draw, but we can have this one mouse pressed function. Now for this mouse press function, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my entire um, circle ellipse conditional. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna delete it from my draw and I'm gonna paste it into my mouse press. And you'll see, ooh, my indentation got weird. So I'm gonna fix my indentation, make sure that my if and else line up, make sure everything is indented under my mouse pressed function. I can even make a note if I wanna keep track of it that mouse pressed ends here if we think that'll help me read my code a little bit better. Um, and now when I run this, when I click my circle, oh no, why is it mad at me? It's not changing my color, but it is reporting my score is zero. Oh, I got rid of my score plus equals one. Um, why is it not changing my color? So I need global score and C color. Okay, there we go. I had to add some global variables in there. So it didn't work right away. I put my global variables in and life was good. So now I have this function. It's looking at my global variables of score and C color. Now when I click, you'll see that it only goes up one at a time, no matter how long I hold my finger down on the mouse and accidentally bring up a new window on my screen. It is just increasing by one. Now notice we did not need to use the mouse pressed variable anymore because we stuck it inside the mouse pressed function. And again, the reason why it didn't work initially is because I needed to make sure that I was calling those global variables so that they could be seen in mouse pressed and it did not simply think I was creating brand new variables here, which I think is what was happening initially. Um, again, this is completely optional, but if you want something to happen um, like one time or you wanna make it a little bit more um, reliable in the way it happens. This is an option, but mouse pressed variable always fine as well. So that is our mouse clicks in two flavors. We will have a button on using the computer keys on your keyboard, which work in a very similar way shortly after this. I hope you enjoy. Feel free to play. There are lots of challenges and exercises in the curriculum, and you're welcome to add this functionality to all the other shapes in your starter code. Bye, guys.